Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, I thought we would take another look at Plex Amp. And as you can see here, I've got my Raspberry Pi booted up. And what we're gonna do today is install the headless version of the Plex Amp player that runs on the Raspberry Pi. And the reason why you might do this is because a lot of people who run Plex Amp are playing lossless audio files. And if you wanted to toss audio from your phone to your big stereo system, you want the best quality. And doing it over a Chromecast or something like that often compresses the audio and you don't get the full quality out of it. But if you've got a Raspberry Pi, you can get very clear digital audio going out of the Pi into your stereo system without losing any quality. You can also attach digital to analog converters that can give you a nice clean output. And this works with those as well. So what we're gonna do in this video is detail the steps of installing it because it is a little more involved than just clicking a button. There's a little bit of command line here. I'm gonna to try to limit the command line usage as much as possible. But once you get it up and running, it just kind of sits on your network and it'll just work. So we're gonna step through the steps of getting this going in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can get Plex Amp's headless version running on our Raspberry Pi. Now the prerequisites for this are that you need a Raspberry Pi running the 64-bit version of the Raspbian OS. And you also wanna make sure that it is up to date before you start work on the project here. This also requires a Plex Pass for it to work. And although Plex Amp now has a free version available, this feature is a Plex Pass feature. So you'll need to make sure that you've got a Plex Pass already set up and you can find an affiliate link in the video description for that. And then we have to install some stuff. And if you go over to this link that I put in the video description, it'll bring you to the active forum post where there are some instructions for getting this to work. And so what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and download the headless package from the Plex Amp page here. So we're gonna right click on that and put it in a new tab. And I'm gonna go down here to the bottom and click on download. And what this will do is give us the latest version of the software that we'll be installing on our Pi. Now you can extract this archive on the command line, but I thought it might be easier for those of you watching who are not into command line so much to uh, just use the graphical user interface to extract it. And what I wanna do here is move this out of my downloads folder and into my home directory here just to be able to extract it more efficiently. So I'm just gonna right click on it and click on cut. I'm gonna go over to my root folder here. I'm then going to right click and paste it and that will drop it off here. And then I'm gonna right click on it again and I'm going to say extract, extract here. And what this will do is put it in a folder and that's where the uh, script that we'll be running will be looking for all of these files here. So now you can see we've got a Plex AMP folder. And if I jump in there, you can see some files in there that we'll be accessing later. Now, again, if you are very savvy on the command line, you could do this a lot quicker. But again, I think for some folks, they just like to see it visually. So that's why we extracted it that way. The next thing we have to do is install Node.js version 16. And that will require some command line, unfortunately. So let's get to that. So I found a helpful guide over on lindevs.com for installing Node.js on a Raspberry Pi. And they've got all these helpful commands already spelled out here. So I'm just going to copy the first one here, which is a curl command. I'm gonna put that in our clipboard. And then I'm going to go up to our command line and I'll zoom in on here a little bit for you. And we're just going to go ahead and paste that in and then hit enter. And what this will do is download the necessary files here to get everything up and running. And then I'm gonna zoom back out here and we're gonna to go to the next step here, which is to run this command to install Node.js. And then we'll jump back to the command line. I will give you a zoom in here again. And I'm just going to paste in that command and hit enter. And what'll happen here now is it will get Node.js installed and up and running. And we'll be able to verify that installation when this is done by using another command that they've detailed on the website here. This might take a minute or two because the Raspberry Pi is a little on the slow side. So we're going to let this finish up and, oh, there it is, it's already done. I was going to cut away here for a second, but now it's done. I'm just gonna type in node dash dash version and just make sure that it is installed. And as you can see here, we have version 16 
up and running now on our Raspberry Pi. So let's get to the next step here, which is getting the headless Plex amp running through Node.js. All right, we do have to go back to the command line now. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We're going to go into the Plex amp directory by typing CD Plex amp. And what we're gonna do in here is type in node.js slash index.js. And this is important to set things up. We are gonna see a couple of errors thrown here on the screen. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, and what it's asking for us to do now is to go into plex.tv slash claim and get a code to log into our system with here. So what I'm gonna do is actually log into my Plex account on the web browser here on screen to grab that code. So let me log in and then I'll show you what happens next. All right, so on the web browser here, I logged into my Plex account. And as you can see here, it wants me to go to plex.tv slash claim to get the code that we need to put in there. So that's what I'm gonna type in here, plex.tv slash claim. And what I should see now, because I'm already logged in, here it is, is a code that will expire in four minutes. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard here. I'm gonna jump back into my command line and paste that in and hit enter. And we're also going to give this a name. I'm just gonna call it pi. And I will hit enter again. Now after I executed that command, I got an error that you can see here on screen, but it does say that Plexamp is now signed in and ready. And what I ended up doing was going back into my command line here and just starting it up again with that node.js command that we did to get it running in the first place. And I had a different outcome this time. You can see that it says creating controller, which is a good thing. And now you can see it's actually running something here in the background. Now, according to our documentation here, our next step is that we need to connect to the IP of the Raspberry Pi on port 32,500. And that will get us a user interface here. We do have to sign in again. And I think we can do some configuration now of our Plex AMP client here. So let's get to that. So with our Plex AMP controller here running in the background, we're going to go to the browser, type in the IP address of our Raspberry Pi with a colon and then port 32,500. And now we're going to be brought to a page that is being served right now by what is running here on the command line window. And they want you to log back into PlexAmp. I'm going to do that here with my browser. And what it will do is take us back here. It will ask us to confirm that we're trying to attach this to our Plex account. I'm going to click sign in here to authenticate that. And then we'll just wait for the page to update here. It says, thanks, you've successfully signed in. You can now close this window which I will of course do. All right, so let's close that authentication window here and check it out. We've got a library selection here. I'm going to pick my music library here. I've got two audio libraries on my Plex server. I'm going to click on continue. And now we've got the ability to play music from this Raspberry Pi using the web browser here running currently on the command line. Now, if you are using a DAC, you'll probably want to point the Plex Amp headless app here at the DAC versus whatever the default audio is set to. I have a Sound Blaster right now connected over USB to my Pi. In full disclosure, Sound Blaster sent this into the channel free of charge a little while back. And what we can do is actually point the headless app at the Sound Blaster. So if you go into this web interface that we've been looking at, and click on the gear icon here, and we go over to playback, and then to audio output. Uh, what we will see when we click on that uh, is the audio device option here. You have to kind of dig down a bit. And in here, you're going to see our Sound Blaster here on the list. And this is gonna require a little bit of trial and error because the Sound Blaster has a couple of different audio outputs. It even has an optical output. So you just have to select the one that will match up with the output that you're looking for. In most cases, the DAC you're using will likely just have a single output. And this will override whatever the default system setting is currently set to. By default, it will go off of whatever your Raspberry Pi is defaulting to. So for example, on my Pi at the moment, let me zoom in on the uh, speaker thing up here. If I right click on my speaker icon, you can see right now the default is going out the AV jack. And so this is where the audio will be sent to right now if I'm playing things back on Plexamp. And I could, of course, make the Sound Blaster 
my default output. So you do have the ability to either just go with whatever you've got set up here or select a specific device off the list inside of your settings here. Now in my testing, the HDMI audio output doesn't seem to work correctly with this setup at the moment. I was getting audio that was very difficult to hear, but the AV jack worked fine and the Sound Blaster DAC here also worked fine. So let me show you how this works in action now that we've done all this effort to get it set up. So I've got a song here on my phone that I'm playing back with Plexamp and it sounds fine on the phone, but maybe I want to have it go through my stereo system now. So I'm going to hit the casting icon here. And then what I'm gonna do is select the Pi option here, which shows up along with all of my Chromecasts. And I'm just gonna to cut to this camera view because watch what happens when I push it. Um, it will then toss it over to the Raspberry Pi where the audio will start playing. Now I'm going to uh, bring up the audio here. I do have it running in analog. This is not the cleanest signal but it sounds fine. This is coming out of the uh, Pi's output at the moment, the audio jack just in the back there. So it's not the cleanest sound you'll get, but this is pretty much how it works. Very similar to how a Chromecast works, but what we're getting is uh, what would be lossless audio if I was playing back a FLAC file. And then of course I can reclaim it here on the phone and the Plex amp headless thing goes back to where it was. And I could also of course initiate music directly through the web browser interface here and have those songs play uh, from my server to the Pi and out to my uh, stereo system. Now, this all seems to be working just fine, but if I go in and kill this uh, app that's running inside of this command line window, everything falls apart. So what we wanna do here is have this run as an active service so that every time I boot up my Raspberry Pi, this is running in the background and I can send music over to it. And as we scroll down the page here on the Plex forum, we'll see there are some instructions that we can paste in on the command line to get this to work. But if we go down a little bit lower, before we do that, we're going to need to edit a file and change the working directory here so that uh, this can run successfully as a service. So what we're gonna do here is jump back over to our command prompt. And what I'm gonna do here is hit uh, control C to close out the application. So now our server is kind of offline. And what I need to do according to the document here is edit the service file. It's called plexamp.service that should be in this plexamp directory. So I'm gonna type in nano and we're going to type in plexamp.service. And what we should see on screen is something very similar to what we see on the web page here. Uh, on the forums and what we need to do is change the two working directories to match up with how my particular Pi is configured. So my default user uh, directory is called lon sideman not Pi. So I'm going to go over here and just change this to lon sideman because that is the name of my home directory. And likewise I'm going to go down a line here as well and change out that Pi to Lon Seidman so that everything finds its way there properly. And I also, in my case, need to change the user that is referenced here because my default user is not Pi, it is Lon Seidman. And that's what I set up when I set up this particular Raspberry Pi. So you will need to type in the proper settings based on how you have things configured on your Pi. And now that I'm done with that, I'm going to hit Control O and write that file out and then we can go back to the instructions and follow those step by step. All right, so now that we've got things set up there, we can go over to the instructions here where we have to copy each of these commands out one by one and execute them on the command line. I'm having a little bit of trouble copying and pasting on this machine if it's not been evident. Uh, so I'll have to show you one thing I'll have to do when I get this pasted in. And we're still in that Plexamp directory where we were earlier. And I'm just going to paste this in now but I do need to go back a bit here because the dollar sign carried over. We wanted to get rid of that. So it just says sudo cp plexamp.service and I'm going to hit enter. And that's going to copy the file that we just edited over to the directory where it will be summoned when we reboot. And then what I have to do is paste each of these commands in individually as well. So let me finish that up. And hopefully when we're done, this will work without having to run the command line every time to get this working. All right, I rebooted the Raspberry Pi here. I've got nothing running on the desktop like we had before. I've got music playing on my phone. 
What I'm gonna do now is hit that casting icon and select our Plex Amp uh, device here on the Pi. And there we go, we've got music now playing through the Raspberry Pi over the network. This successfully booted itself up. I'm gonna pause it here real quick, if it lets me, there we go. Uh, and we're able now to use this as a headless playback location, but I've got now the advantages of being able to play lossless audio on my phone and have it play losslessly over the network to the Pi that would be presumably connected to my stereo system. So if you are an enthusiast who doesn't want to lose quality but want the convenience of being able to cast from a phone, this is a great way to do it. And if you've paired up with a really nice high quality DAC, you will have some very nice high fidelity audio from your Plex library. So hopefully this was helpful. It's not the easiest thing to set up, uh, but right now that's how it works. And I think a lot of you might get some value out of this because it further enhances that great music player we've got with Plex Amp. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.